Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to introduce a new lazy loaded module in our application. Lazy loading is often seen as an advanced router topic that is only taught at the very end of training materials. In this course I'm introducing lazy loading as early as possible in the course, so right after the router fundamentals we are immediately adding lazy loading to our application. And this is in order to encourage you to use lazy loading in your application from the beginning as much as possible. If you build your application with a lot of components and routes without lazy loading and then later on you want to add lazy loading to it, it's going to be much harder. So I encourage you to use lazy loading as much as possible and from the beginning in your own application. And in the case of our sample application, we are going to be using lazy loading in this lesson to load a separate module from our application root module, which is going to be the courses module. As part of that lazy loaded module, we're going to be loading here the home screen of our application, which is going to display a list of course cards here on the center of the screen whenever we click here on the courses menu item. The component that we will be displaying that contains the list of course cards is going to be the home component. If we have a look at the component we can see that it's a very simple component that is using a courses service which is an HTTP based service that allows us to fetch courses from a backend endpoint. Let's have a look here at the implementation of load all courses. As we can see, the courses service is an HTTP service that provides a series of methods that we are going to be needing throughout the course to build our application. And one of those methods is the load all courses method that does a call to the REST endpoint slash API slash courses. As this course is focusing on the Angular router, the home component is already ready to be used. So it would be very simple to take the home component and simply plug it in in our routing configuration in the same way that we have done for the login component and the about component. However, the home component is part of a separate module in our application that might not be used in certain circumstances. So if we check here the folder structure of our application, we're going to see that we have here a courses folder containing a courses module, which includes a series of components. We have the home screen, we have a course page component, we have a lessons list component, etc. So all of these components are part of the courses module. If we open here the courses module file, we are going to see that all these components are part of the module and we have here the Angular material modules and other modules that we have needed to build this set of components. We can see also that the courses service is part of the courses module. What we want to do is to make sure that the courses module is lazy loaded into our application, meaning that only if we really need, for example, the home component, should this module be loaded. This means that our courses module and all of its components are going to be built in a separate JavaScript bundle. Only if we access a certain part of the application do we want to lower those components into the browser. If we don't access any screen that needs the courses module, then in that case, we are never going to be loading that special JavaScript bundle containing the courses module. And as a result, our application JavaScript footprint on the front end is going to be smaller as a consequence. The Angular router has great support for lazy loaded modules. So let's switch here to our application routing configuration and let's see how can we plug the courses module into our router, ensuring that the module gets lazy loaded. The first thing that we need to do in order to add a lazy loaded module via the router is to define the activation path of the router. In our case, the courses module is going to be activated by any routes starting with slash courses. So any route in our application that starts with this prefix is going to trigger the lazy loading of the courses module. Let's see how this works in our routing configuration. We're going to add here the configuration to a new route and we are going to define the path attribute as being courses. 
So this is the slash courses path that is going to activate our lazy loaded module. Next, instead of adding here a component property, we are going to be adding the module itself. Now the module is going to be lazy loaded and that is essentially an asynchronous operation. We can configure the lazy loading of the module by using the load children property. So the courses module is going to contain inside it a series of child routes. Child routes of the courses path are going to be any routes that start with courses. So an example of a child route would be courses slash angular dash router dash course. So this would be an example of a child route. Imagine also another child route, which would be a child of this particular route, which would be slash 17. So this would be a route targeting the lesson 17 of the Angular router course. So all of these are examples of router child routes and the property load children simply means that these child routes of the courses route should be loaded in a lazy loaded and asynchronous way. So we are going to be lazy loading our child routes by providing here to load children a function. This function takes no arguments and it should return the courses module once it's invocated. Because this is an asynchronous operation, this is expected to return a promise that when successfully resolved, returns the courses module itself. So how can we implement this function? We can do so by using plain JavaScript. So we are going to be using a dynamic import. We are going to be using the JavaScript import syntax. So this is the syntax that we use in order to dynamically import a module. So this is as opposed to statically importing a module using here the import keyword in this well-known syntax. Instead, we're going to be using the import keyword as a function. And to this function, we're going to pass the path in the file system to the file that we want to import. So let's build here the path that we need. We are currently on this folder, so we want to access the courses folder. So let's go ahead and add it here. And after that, we want to access the courses module file. So let's then add here the name of this file and we don't need the extension. So now we have accessed here the courses module file, which here in our file system is a TypeScript file but once the application gets built, it's going to be a plain JavaScript file. And as a result of calling this dynamic import, we are going to get back a promise. The promise is going to give us back a reference to the file itself. So from here, using the dot then syntax of promises, we are going to access here the file that just got loaded. And from there, we are going to access the courses module. So the courses module is the only export of the courses module file that we have just imported. As we can see, there is only one export here. We access the export using simply the dot notation and we return it as the result of this then clause. So the end result is a function that when called returns a promise that when successfully evaluated gives back to the Angular router a reference to the courses module. And with this, we have finished importing the courses module in a lazy loaded way. Now, at this point in the course, if you try the application as it is and you access here slash courses, you are not going to get anything on the screen yet. And this is because the courses module has not yet set up its own routes. Let's then learn on the next lesson how can the lazy loaded courses module set up its own routing configuration and display the home component on the screen.